What is up, guys? Good to see you both. What's up? <laughs> Hi. Hi, Ash. Hi, how are you? Hi, Niall. How are you? Oh, Jojo, it's good to see you. And all your curls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, my, my hair's looking pretty good, right? Yeah, it looks great. By the way, um, I'm noticing that Ash's uh, Zoom cam, just so everybody listening, uh, it says Ash. And of course, Niall's Zoom cam says uh, Ron Burgundy. So, Ron you know, Burgundy. There we go. There you go. Hey, Ash, where are you at right now? What part of the world are you in? I'm in West, uh, West Hollywood. Okay, so she's close to me. I'm in uh, Santa Clarita, so not too far from you. Uh, Ron Burgundy, Niall, where are you at right now? San Diego. I don't know, London. London. All right, very nice. <laughs> How did you guys meet? Was it just, you know, working on the song or did you, were you friends before this or who, how did Ash and Niall Horan become best friends? <laughs> how did we become best friends? <laughs> Aww. Um, well, I had, I have a friend who works over at Capitol and she just has always been like a real big champion of mine. And she, it's like her first thing at Capitol was put Niall and I in touch and we were on a FaceTime, I think within like a couple of days of that. And we just, we just fell, fell for each other. Just, just went for it. Now your take on that, uh, same similar story, I assume. Something along those lines. Yes. Uh, no, I got uh, an email off this particular person, Amanda. Uh, and, uh, Amanda said that Ash would like me to sing on the song and could she put me in touch? And I said, yes. So then me and Ash FaceTimed and we got on like a house on fire straight away. <laughs> and then um, we had a bit of a laugh. And then I was like, I absolutely love the song. We spoke about that for a bit. And then within a few days I'd recorded it. And three weeks later it was on, it was actually ready to go earlier, but obviously with what was going on in the planet at the time, we pushed everything back out of decency uh for obvious yeah. reasons and then uh, it's out and it's going really well and ash is ridiculously talented and i'm very happy to be part of a smash hit a it, smash it is doing quite well and of course we'll smash. play a uh, moral of the story in a few moments ash uh i assume you've been working hard in quarantine on your debut album is what i'm hearing are you like uh, going crazy recording i see a mic there what have you been doing <laughs> Yeah, I've just been writing. I've, the album is so close, but I, we're in that really like sweet spot of everything we have we love, but now maybe we can beat what we have. So well, that's where you're at. Yeah, we're at the beat, beat what we have phase. It's the most comfortable phase of writing an album. Um, and I'm taking it as slow as possible. Yeah, it's been so fun. Is that a place that every artist gets to? I've never heard that phrase, but I've heard it put other ways. But you yeah. get a, a group of songs that we feel comfortable with. Can yeah. we beat that? Is that something you go through as well now? Yeah, exact same. But it's, the, it's also the part that lasts the longest. <laughs> because if you're like, I think Ash is pretty similar to me. I had this chat with you a hundred times, Georgia. You never know when you're actually done. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. yeah. And what, what, I, what I find usually happens from, you know, from stories I've been told is, right before it's time to turn it in like you it's midnight we're ready we've already been through the beat the song process and then lightning strikes right then oh yeah. my god what do i do do i save this for the next album do i give it away to somebody else so true. record label stressing oh here we go question for you now do you have more music and a tour planned for 2021 i assume that's uh you know because 2020 straight to hell 2021 yeah. <laughs> you know let's let's look to 21 Right what do you got hell. coming up? <laughs> Straight to hell. Straight to hell. Um, yeah, well, um, I'm kind of like at a loose end at the moment. I just released an album the week quarantine had started. So uh, that didn't go down crazily well uh, for that reason. Um, I, um, I'm just kind of writing at the moment and trying to figure out what it is that's next. Um, uh, and then, yeah, if I, can, like, if I could get a couple of songs out of this year and then hopefully book a tour in with all the 7,000 artists that are going on tour next year. <laughs> if I can fit in between the dates, um, I would love to tour. Touring is my favorite place. I would have been on tour right now. Um, and it's a shame it never got to happen, but I kind of don't really know the answer to this question. <laughs> to be honest, Jojo, yeah, who knows, really, I'm a bit know. loose ended. Yeah. Ash, I think uh, Niall was the last or one of the last artists that I talked to before quarantine hit. I mean, he walked, it might've been like the day after, when things shut down, it was, it was crazy. It was, I mean, 2020 
is Cut. naughty. Very naughty. <laughs> naughty year. No, no, oh, no, man. no, no. Ash, here's a question I've asked Niall quite a few times. Let me ask you this question. And I love, uh, I love psycho fan encounters. I and just can't get enough of them. Not, I'm sure very few psycho fan encounters during quarantine. I wouldn't imagine. Uh, but do you have a psycho fan encounter, Ash? And I'm not saying your fans are all nuts, but every now and then somebody gets a little too extra. <laughs> just calling people out right now. Yeah. Hmm. I've, got, I've got a few of them. I won't name any fan accounts, but they're, um, they're a little spicier than the others. Especially when they're like, get in our group chat. And I was like, ah, ah. <laughs> yeah. Have you had the ones yet where Niles told me some stories where he's been chased? I think he was in his buddy's car. He's a famous football player. And they scratched his car trying to get a glimpse of him in the window. I recall that story. I think there are people hiding in trash cans at one point. I mean, I don't know I what. Memory, Jojo. Yeah, I don't know what hasn't happened uh, when it comes to crazy fan encounters now. Do you want to throw one at her and give her an example of what I'm, you know. Yeah. God, Jojo, you name it, it's happened. Uh, God, I don't know. Have you had a, have you had any people come up to you in the street yet? Have you had any like? Yeah, yeah, I not, but everyone who's come up to me has been fairly sweet. I I once sat on a plane. I literally sat next to two people who were fans, and it was just like a chance encounter. And they bought me, they bought me drinks the entire time, and I just got sauced with them. <laughs> um, <laughs> awesome. I love them. But that, but that was like they were great. I don't know. I've had fans like you know obviously wait outside the venue for ages and come up and run when once you get out of your show. But most mostly so far, I'm not on Niles. I've been famous for ten years level yet. Well, who is you know Ash? Who is who's <laughs> crazy like that? Yeah. Uh, well, who, who whoever is? those fans were that bought you the drinks. I mean, book a flight with them every time. Question for the both of you: favorite lyric from moral of the story is there a line or two that really rings with you guys it can be the same it doesn't matter ash mm -hmm. you want to go first yeah i would say you can think that you're in love when you're really just engaged probably mm -hmm. oh i would say they say it's better to have loved than us than never to have loved at all yeah. That could be a load of shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that, what, that, what is that, that? What does your line ring with you, Ash? What is? What about that line? Uh, it's just the most personal line of the entire, you know, record being about you know my life. But and I just think it's I love that it was the most perfect rhyme, and we could just slip it in there. I mean, it was it was fate. Perfect sums the story up as well, and one little line one change of a word uh mine would ring for me because we always as traditionalists we always go on what people say to you right you know and the thing life is going to go like this but that could be a load of shit <laughs> and, ain't that the truth and it usually is yes more more times than not uh ash tell me the story that you mentioned before we started taping this countdown about how you sent a uh, message to someone else about Nile. Turns out that message went straight to Nile. <laughs> Share that uh, moment if you uh, if you can. It could have been so much worse, Jojo. Nile, it could have been so much worse. Imagine if I was like, oh, I guess just got Nile's vocals. Pretty <laughs> tough. <laughs> no, I was I was going to text one of my friends and the co one of my co writers on moral of the story, and was like you know, something about like huge news, you know, we got, we got Niall's voice on Moral of the Story. I'm so excited. Something like that. But I actually. And that's big news. That's big news. But it's that's massive. big. Yeah. Anyway, go on. Go on. Do tell. <laughs> I sent it to Niall. I typed in Niall's name on accident and sent it to him. And then I immediately after I sent it, I knew something was wrong. You know, when you feel it in your gut, like what's wrong? Something's not right. <laughs> and then I looked and I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, we got Nile Horn's vocals. He played Wait. it off so well. You what did I say? Like, you were like the actual real Nile Horn. <laughs> <laughs> you, play, you played it off very well. And then we just started sending gifts of you back and forth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah just so you guys know, I, I did it. The, the way this came up, I was on a, a surprise birthday Zoom call before we taped the countdown. And... Um, 
uh, my friend had a birthday. We surprised him. I went to you know, send a DM to his girlfriend like, hey, that was amazing. Of course, I sent that to Ash. So felt really good about Look that. You know, I'm a real mess. Plus, Ash, I've got a history of uh, Instagram fails with Niall. I jumped on one of his lives once. And that was shortly <laughs> after I dropped my phone in ranch dressing. So the audio was terrible. And his fans hit me up to this day like, do you got a new phone yet? I'm like, oh, my God. So, you know, it's part oh. of a long, painful history. Let's do this track, you guys. Moral of the story. What do people need to know? Ash, I'll start with you. Mm. They need to know that the song was felt so complete at the get-go, but having Niall on it made the song. Niall, this your girl, thoughts? This girl, every time she says the right things. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this song is genius, is the way I would describe it. Uh, it's genius songwriting, it's genius melodically and lyrically, and she's got an unbelievable voice, and I'm just singing the second verse. Biggest crowd you've ever performed for, and the flip of that, have you ever been booed? Because <laughs> I would admit <laughs> I've been booed. I've heard some um, crazy stories. It is. Yeah. I think the biggest crowd, I, I got to guest on a friend's at um, Coachella, and I think that was 15 or 20,000 people. That was a lot of people. Who was that? Uh, uh, it was my friend's Big Gigantic. No, yeah. It was like, <laughs> it was like Coachella 2017, I think. Um, it was like 15 or something thousand people. That was pretty cool. Um, and then I have, ne I've never been booed. I've had people ask me to sh do some dumb, dumb ass shit. But, um, <laughs> as an opener, when you're an opener, you are not safe. Support acts are not safe. As a I'm, I'm a headliner now, so it's much better, but ooh, fans are great. Fans get crazy. I've heard some now, wild stories. you opened for like, not opened, um, played for like 60,000 people. I've played two more than 60,000 people. Are you Niall, serious? Give us your story. Niall, biggest crowd versus biggest crowd mood. See, when you, play, when you play a stadium, usually if you put the stage on one end of the stadium, which takes out all of those seats behind, behind, so you lose all of those seats. Um, whereas in, there's a stadium in Ireland called Croke Park. It's like our national stadium. And that stadium just is, is just horseshoe. And that holds 85 so 85 wow. to 86, 80, something like that, which is pretty cool. That's crazy. Yeah, Niall, was... have you ever been booed? Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure I've been booed oh, loads of times. Just couldn't hear it. I had my in-ears in. My, <laughs> hater, my, my, my hater blockers. Oh, nice. Ash, question for you. Um, true or false, every single sweatshirt you own has a coffee stain on it, or so I'm told. Is that a true? Is that true? True, that's right. That's right, JoJo. You've heard that right. <laughs> Every, I mean, are you just a big sloppy, messy coffee drinker? How does this, how does this happen? Hey. <laughs> I mean, you know, got to ask. Yeah. You know, first time meeting. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I got to be nice. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I just drink, I drink a lot of coffee and I'm usually drinking on walks and I'm, when I'm on a walk, I'm just like sloppy in my sweat, sweatsuit. So I know. She also, she also drinks about eight cups of coffee before like 6 a.m. So you're still a bit like, whoop, after waking Every up. Every time you say that, you add a number. You're like, six cups of coffee, eight cups of coffee. <laughs> she just, has, she's got a coffee addiction, Jojo. I, I think that's, we've, 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 uh, we've discovered a problem here. It's, it's uh, eight <laughs> cups of coffee before 8 a.m. You're bound to spill something. I mean, it's just got to happen, you know? I think it I'm might be. Yeah, we've, we've discovered it. Uh, Ash, time for an intervention. Have you ever had a paranormal encounter? I am obsessed with ghosts, UFOs, conspiracy theories, conspiracy theories. I have a podcast called Paranormalish. It's just, I'm off the deep end. I know Niall's story. Have you? Mm, I really want to know Niall's story. <laughs> I'm sure he'll um, tell it. <laughs> yeah, when I was in high school, I, there was a brief moment that I was living alone. And I got home and the door was already open. And I went upstairs and that night there was like a bunch of knocking and, but I don't know. I don't know, but I thought it was a ghost. Niall, you may have had a count. Uh, Niall, uh, you can tell the story if you like, but he had, uh, I actually did some research on the place you did, you where did. Niall stayed at because he told me this crazy story. It's where him and the boys were at when they first signed together as a group. 
super nice posh, you know, apartment complex that the label put him up in. But uh, the history of the place was crazy dark. And he may have had an encounter with Jack the Ripper. <gasps> What's Good. the name of that place now? Princess Park Manor. Yes, that's Good. what it's called. And it was like, a, I seen like the, like the silhouette of like, like a tall man with a top hat and a little trench coat vibe. You actually saw it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I did. No. <laughs> that's so scary. Uh-uh. Well, Jojo, a- Jojo did a bit of research and found that it would, Jack the Ripper spent a bit of time there because it used to be like a mental asylum. Yeah. The place he lived at uh, had so many crazy things happen in it. And one of the people that they think may have been Jack the Ripper, you can't say for sure, uh, has a tie to that place. And of course, you know, the top hat, every, everyone wore top hats like that back then, but Jack the Ripper did. So I'm thinking Niall had an encounter with Jack the Ripper. That's just my theory. Anyway, uh, um, Niall, I have to ask you this every time. I think you're the only artist. Matter of fact, you are the only artist that I ask about how your friend Mully is doing. There you go. Mully's great. Mully, Mully uh, by the way, Ash, Mully is my best friend. We live together in LA. We've known each other since we were three years old um maybe four or something like that um and molly i spoke to jojo about molly once and every time i'd say i've done 20 odd interviews in my career with jojo and we talk about molly every time um so molly uh molly's fine he's back in la he was in vancouver with his girlfriend uh he's back in la now getting the bar he's got a bar in hollywood he's getting uh, up and running again after quarantine and he just had a haircut the other day uh, he had a shave I mean, he's never looked better, to be honest. And I guess uh, maybe you, uh, Ash, I assume you haven't met, based on what Niall just said, you haven't met Mully yet, right? No, but I guess I have to. I haven't met Niall yet. <laughs> what? Oh, well, I guess that makes sense, <laughs> being the fact that it's quarantine, but yeah. wow, you guys have not met in person. You're ki- that's, you know what? Shocking, but not shocking, you know? <laughs> exactly. Well, I one of these it. days after you meet Niall, you have to meet Mully, and then I'll ask you the same question because I'm obsessed with his friend, Mully. I don't know why. This is one of them things. <laughs> Who knows? How do you think touring will be different uh, when, when it finally you know, gets back to, when it, finally gets, when it finally starts to happen? Will meet and greets be different? Will fans stand behind the glass to take a selfie? Uh, how, how, do, how do you think it's going to work? Oh, I hope not. I mean, masks, I, I'm sure 2021 masks will be required at shows. So you better get some fancy looking ass. <laughs> um, meet and greets. I'm such a hugger. At meet and greets, I'm, I go in for the hug. That's going to be really tough to break. But I think for at least 2021, we're probably going to. Are we going to be able to hug? Fans? I don't know. I think, I think, uh, I think the smaller gigs will come back first because less people, less chance of the rate of R going up. Listen, uh, and um, I think the bigger like arenas and stuff won't come back for a long time. I don't think. I don't see how you can. If I can't go to the pub right now, I don't see how twenty thousand people are going to be in an arena for a long time. I guess I have to cancel my arena tour that I was planning. So exactly. Yeah. Darn it. And make that the Sucks. headline: canceled arena tour. <laughs> <laughs> what has a uh, twenty twenty taught you? Oh, now I'll go first. First of all, I assume moral of the story is number one. Well, of course. I mean, clearly, you know, let's not get crazy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if it's not, I don't know what the hell is going on. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, what's 2020 taught me? Wow. Mm-hmm. Um, that I can spend long periods of time in one place? Didn't think I could. It was thought it was impossible. This is the longest period of time in 10 years I've spent in one place, which is insane to say, really. So in the entire place. time, London, basically in, in your apartment for the most part, right? Yeah. At the weekend, I drove 60 miles, and the furthest I'd been before that was about two. So it was just, it's just insane. I've become very patient. Um, I didn't think I was impatient. You know me well, Jojo. Quite the jittery person. Yep. Um, I need to be on the move. So I think I've definitely become a lot more patient. Ash, what has 2020 taught you? Yeah, I think patience is probably one of them. Also, um, that it's okay not to be right. Like whatever you were thinking, whatever you thought you thought you knew, 
probably isn't <laughs> the case. I don't know. 2020 just kept smacking us over the face with like, well, actually, <laughs> so I feel like it's been sort of like my motto of like not trying to be right, but like get it right. <laughs> 2020s, 20, 2020s has been, yeah, knocking me up. So Interesting. It's been good. Great. That was such a good answer. Love it. Yeah. Yeah, K- Katy Perry told me on a previous countdown, she says, man, the, the New Year's Eve celebration for 2020 is going to be, it, it's going to be crazy. Like 10, the, the 10, nine, eight, seven, six is going to, let's, let's get through this. Come on. Nine, five, yeah, four, yeah. Three, out, you know, 2021, let's go. Any, oh. We'll just count down from three. <laughs> yes, yeah, sir. Three. Let's go. <laughs> Quick recap. Moral of the story is out. Get on it. Uh, both you guys are working on bodies of music or more music. So look out for that um tours at some point i mean there's a lot of stuff we don't know but a tour will happen whenever it happens look out for that uh, i forgot to tell you guys i was in the uh, drive through at coffee bean uh yesterday with my daughter and your song comes on the radio and my daughter you know she says hey by the way this song was in the movie you know the movie it was featured in and she gives me all the backstory and she goes, i love this song and i'm like oh my god so if you know i'm talking to ash and nile tomorrow she goes oh well tell him i said hello she's super chill just tell him i said hi so hello for my daughter sophie sophie hi, sophie. <laughs> sophie is a lovely lady and she's grown up in front of my own eyes it is crazy man she's 12 now just turned 12. Hey. anyway what else am i uh forgetting what what else do people need to know ash and Nile, before we wrap this whole thing up mm. <laughs> Wow, that says it all right there. Wowie. Uh, they need to know. What do they need to know? They need to know that the pubs are open this weekend and I'm going to be in them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are loved and they are beautiful. Good hey answer, guys. Ash. You covered up for me well, very well there. Love it. <laughs> Ash, great to meet you. Thanks for your time. Love you. So nice meeting you. Thanks for having me. And Niall, good to see you again. You're a madman as always. Love you. Love you too, Jojo. Pleasure as always. At the end of every countdown, fist bump to make it official. Tap that Zoom cam. Give me a pie.